So today what we're going to do is we're going to begin our look at actually some background information. This is not really algebra we're going to be dealing with today, but it's one of the topics, one of the topics from arithmetic that students have the most trouble with. So we're going to look at some, uh, some background topics. We're going to spend the first several weeks, actually, looking at background topics before we can launch into the algebra. And the one that we're going to look at today is we're going to look at fractions, you bet. Fractions are the arithmetic topic that drives students crazy. And they don't have to. There is absolutely no reason why you should not be able to do fractions. Okay? Fractions, but they have their own set of rules, and I'm sure that's why people don't want to have to learn a different rule. If 2 plus 4 is 6, then 1 half plus 1 4 should be 1 6, right? Or 2 6. Doesn't work that way. And we're going to talk a little bit about why thing, fractions don't behave. And then we're going to go through, and I'm going to give you some processes for working with fractions. Now, this might not be exactly the way you've learned it before, but that's fine because if the way you learned it before is not working, you need to learn it a different way anyway. And I'm going to give you some processes and some ways of looking at them, at fractions, that will lead you into the algebra that we need to do. Okay? So, here's what I'm going to tell you. This is one of the few times I'm ever going to tell you, I want you to do this my way. Because normally, all I'm concerned with, did you get the right answer? Right? But the reason I'm asking you to do, to do this my way is because I want to be able to lead you into something bigger later, right? And if you have this down now, then you won't have to relearn it then, okay? So the first thing we want to talk about is just what a fraction is. First of all, fractions are made up of numerators and denominators. The numerator is always the top number. The denominator is always the bottom number. And the reason that, reason that fractions don't behave like other numbers is that the numerator over denominator literally means that you are taking the numerator and dividing it by the denominator. So in reality, fractions are not even numbers. Fractions are really division problems. And that's why they don't behave like other numbers. Okay? But if you'll get that through your head, that, unique, that the reason they're unique is because they're not really numbers, they're division problems, then you can understand, you can begin to understand why they have their own set of rules and why we have to be, treat them differently. Okay? And the first and most basic rule of fractions is the idea of reducing to lowest terms. Now this is the terminology that the that Course Compass uses and so that's why I'm using this, this same terminology. I learn this as simplify or simply reduce. I don't really care what, what word you use, and I might slip back into say it's simplify it, so you need to know that that means I'm reducing to lowest terms. But I always want to give you the, the terminology that Course Compass is going to use so that you, don't, so that you can connect the two. Okay? So, I'll, uh, many times their, their uh, explanations of things are kind of longer than you really need to be able to get to it, but I want, you to, I want you to have that parallel. When you're talking about simplifying or reducing, what that means to do is to actually do the division. All right? And there are two ways of doing the division. First of all, sometimes the numerator will divide evenly by the denominator. And in that case, you can just divide. Say, for example, remember we're doing our little split page note-taking system here. So say, for example, we have um, 8 over 2. Now, you can really divide 8 by 2, can't you? Sure. So 8 divided by 2 is going to make what? 4. And since they divide it evenly, there's no fraction as your answer. Okay. So sometimes the fraction bar is just the division symbol, so you just perform the division. In other times, you're not going to be able to divide it completely, but you'll be able to divide some of it. So in other words, look at this one that I've written. 2 divided by 8. 
Now, can you divide a 2 by an 8? No, you can never divide a small number by a larger number, right? So you have to make sure that you know that it's always the top one divided by the bottom one. Because the temptation here is to write 4 for this one as well, but it's not. But, is there any common factor? Now, I know we've never talked about this word factor before, so I want to define it. But, but factor simply means anything that will divide evenly into both. Anytime you see the word factor, that means anything that will divide evenly into your number. So, but it has to divide evenly into both to be a common factor. So if you see this 2 and 8, what number will divide into both 2 and 8 at the same time? Two. They'll both divide by 2. So all we're going to do is divide by 2. What's 2 divided by 2 going to leave? One, one. 1. And 8 divided by 2 is going to leave? 4. four. So your completed or simplified answer is 1 fourth. All right? Now, obviously, you're going to have bigger numbers than that. And that's fine. And if you do have bigger numbers, sometimes what you might want to do, uh, say we have 25 divided by 80, for example, is that you may want to divide these things in pieces. This one won't divide in pieces. Hold on a minute. I've given you a problem that I don't want to give you. Let's see. Uh, let's try it as 85 and see what happens there. It might come out. If it doesn't, that's fine. Lesson learned. Will 25 divide evenly by 85? No way, can't happen, right? But is there any number that will divide into both of those? Pretty obvious if you think about it. Five will, right? It doesn't matter if you find the largest thing right away. Just do what's obvious. Because what I'm trying to get here is that you can do it in pieces as you go. If you divide them both by five, what's 25 divided by five going to give you? Five. What's 85 divided by five going to give you? Five goes into eight once with three left over. So that's so 17. Is there anything to divide into 5 and 17? No. no, so you're done. Okay, let me do another example. Now, I know some of you will see this right away, but let's just pretend we don't. Okay, now 24 won't divide evenly by 36, will it? Okay, but 24 and 36 are both even, so we know they'll at least divide by what? 2. Two. Now, this will divide by something bigger. I don't want to know it, though. I'm just going to go with what's obvious. We know they'll both divide by 2, so let's just divide them by 2. If you divide by 2, that gives you 12 over what? 18? But am I done now? No, because 12 and 18 will still divide again, divide some more. So you can always take it in pieces as you go. Don't always think that you have to find the biggest number right away. If you have to divide again, that's fine. It's better to take more steps and do it in smaller pieces and get the correct answer than to divide what you th by what you think it should be and get the wrong answer. Okay? What will divide into both of these? Yeah, they'll both divide by 6. Or you could use 2 again. Or you could use 3, right? But in this case, we're going to go ahead and divide by 6 and get straight to the answer. 12 divided by 6 gives you 2. 18 divided by 6 gives you 3. And so there, for 2 over 3 is your completed answer, right? So even though you take it in stages, if the numbers are bigger, take it in pieces. You don't have to find the largest number right away. What's your goal? Fast or correct? <laughs> yeah. So it's not about speed. It's about accuracy. Okay? Good. So that is the golden rule for all fractions is that you must reduce them to lowest terms or simplify. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to begin, oops, sorry about that, is we're going to begin the actual operations with fractions. And we're going to start with the two simplest operations. And usually you wouldn't start with these two operations. When you first learned, started learning numbers, you learned add and subtract first, right? Then you learn multiply and divide later. But with fractions, we're actually going to reverse it because it's easier to multiply and divide them than it is to add or subtract them. And so we're going to talk first about multiplying fractions. Okay. 
Because this is the easiest operation that you can do. Because you already know most of it. We just talked about it. Now, I know there are lots of different patterns and ways you can multiply fractions. And some of you will do just the easiest way, and that's the way you were probably taught. The easiest thing to think of is just multiply straight across and then reduce your answer. But what if you multiplied 135 times 50? You're going to get a huge number. Well, what if you could turn that 135 into a 7 and that 50 into a 5? 7 times 5 would be a lot easier to multiply, wouldn't it? So what I want to do is I want to show you how to multiply fractions in the most efficient way possible. And this is not only about making the numbers smaller and therefore making your problems easier. This is also leading you into the algebra. Because in arithmetic, you can just multiply straight across and reduce the final answer. But in algebra, that simply won't work. Because in algebra, the problems are going to get too big if you do that. So in algebra, you have to, to simplify first. So when you're multiplying fractions, the first step is to simplify. There I go again. I just told you I wouldn't do that, which means reduce, right? But think about it. When you're multiplying, you're not going to have just one fraction to multiply. You're going to have to have at least two, or it's not multiplication, <coughs> is it? So you're going to have at least two fractions. And you can, so you can simplify or reduce any numerator to any denominator. It doesn't matter which fraction that you're working with as long as you simplify numerator to what? Denominator. Now, can I simplify numerator to numerator? No. I have to be crossing that fraction bar in order to make this work because the fraction bar is the division symbol. Right? Now, so, it doesn't matter. What if I had three fractions? Would it matter which numerator and denominator? Hmm. So, could I reduce the first numerator with the third denominator? You bet. Okay. Also remember that, like that one we did with the 24 over 36, sometimes they'll reduce more. So if you use it once, does that mean you won't use it anymore? No, you can still use it more, right? Okay. So keep get it completely reduced. Second step is to simply multiply straight across. So in other words, you'll take numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. And because you've already simplified it or reduced it, the answer you get will already be reduced. So you don't have to worry about reducing it any further. It'll already be reduced once you've, when, as long as you reduce before you multiply. Now again, in straight arithmetic, you could just go ahead and multiply straight across and be done. But that won't work in algebra. In algebra, what you need to simplify when? First, before you do the multiplication. So get in the habit of doing that. A lot of us were taught that trick of just multiply and then reduce whatever you get. But we really need to reverse that process. Okay? Many times, even though you were able to get the answer in your arithmetic class, you're not getting the right answer in algebra because the shortcuts you were told don't translate. Okay? So one of the reasons why we, have, we start here without before even pre-algebra topic is that we have to undo some of the bad behaviors that you've learned to get you ready to do the algebra. And a lot of times it's, that's, that's part of the problem of students with their algebra. Let's look at a couple of examples of this. Now I'm pulling these examples straight from your homework because I want you to see problems that come from your homework. In other words, these will be the problems just like the ones you're going to be doing in class. And, but there's one problem with that. If I pull them from your homework, occasionally your, your homework problem is going to be the one I've done in class. If that's the case, don't just cheat and, and put down the answer I've done. Go down and hit similar exercise and get another problem. Because you need to make these work on your own, not just copy what I've done. Okay? So let's say we have one-third times 3 over 2. What operation is indicated by that dot? Multiplication. Multiplication. With what kind of numbers? These are what kind of numbers? They're fractions, right? Now, look at what I'm about to do off to the side. 
I know that the operation is multiplication, so I'm going to write it off to the side. With what kind of numbers? Fractions. fractions. In order to multiply fractions, the first thing I need to do is what? Reduce. Reduce. And it's any numerator to any what? Denominator. Denominator. Doesn't matter where you see it. So look at the first numerator. It's 1. Will anything divide? Sorry about that. 1 and 3 won't divide. 1 and 2 won't divide. So go over here. 3 and 2 won't divide, but what will? 3 and 3. Three. Three but it's from two different fractions. Does that matter? No. Not when it's multiplication, it doesn't. 3 and 3 will both divide by? 3. 3 divided by 3 leaves you a 1 there. 3 divided by 3 leaves you a 1 there. And then you simply multiply how? Straight across. 1 times 1 in the top leaves me a 1. 1 times 2 in the bottom leaves me a 2. And the completed answer then is 1 half. Okay? How easy is that? Pretty happy? Okay? If you know the rules, it's all easy. Which is why I'm writing these things off on the side like this. Because these are the steps, the processes, the rules you need. And you need to get in the habit of associating the rules with the process. All too often what math students do is they just look at the problem and then try to figure out what to do. You don't want to be there. Instead, you want to look at the problem and tell it what to do. But the only way you'll be able to do that is if you know what? The rules. The rules, the steps. Okay? So, and if you know that it's a problem for you to memorize those kinds of things, then go off to the side and write them down as you do the problem. As a matter of fact, to help you, <laughs> you know, I'm always all about helping you, to help you do that, on your test, you will have a problem now, it could be fractions. It could be anything that we cover in this section. You will have a problem that says, write down the steps for solving this problem. I want to ask you to solve it. Or it may be one that you've already solved. You know, I might say, the question number eight may be, write down the steps for solving question number nine. And I don't want to see the work. I want to see what? The rules. You bet. Now look, at I abbreviate it a lot, and that's fine. You use whatever abbreviations. Because in a minute, when I do this next one, I'm going to write M for multiply, F for fraction, right? Because you all, all it is is really a trigger to get you to do the right thing at the right time. And that's what math is all about. Okay, let's look at another problem. Say we have 7 over 6 times 30 over 49. Now I'm going to warn you, these numbers are still quite small. Of course, Compass doesn't have any problem giving you huge numbers. But you're always going to do what first? First of all, we need to know what operation it is. This is what? Multiplication. multiplication. With what kind of numbers? Fractions. fractions. Before you multiply fractions, you always what? Reduce. Reduce. Any numerator to any? denominator. 7 and 6 won't divide, but 7 and 49 will both divide by what? 7. 7, seven divided by itself leaves 1. one. 49 divided by 7 is 7. seven. 6 and 30 will divide, both divide by? 5. Two. Well, 6, yeah, and that means it gives you a 1 there and it gives you a 5 there. Don't worry about it. Everybody does that. I do it. I'll do it up here. And then, now that I've got it all reduced, I just multiply how? Straight across. In the top, 1 times 5 is? Five in the bottom, one times seven is seven, and that's your completed answer. And because we reduced it fully over here, it's already reduced in your answer. Okay. Now, are we always going to have just two fractions? Nope. You can do more. Let's look at this one. Everybody hates this one, but don't worry about it. Just take it piece by piece. 3 over 7 times 10 over 13 times 14 over 15. It looks bad. You got three fractions. Don't like fractions in the first place. 
three fractions to multiply together, and those are going to give you some pretty big numbers. What would happen if I just started multiplying straight across here? I mean, you get some huge numbers that you'd have to then reduce out at the end. Is it easier to divide a 5 and a 15 or a 135 and a 175, right? So it's, you need to do it first. Now, 3 won't divide here with the 7, but 3 and 13 won't divide, but 3 and 15 will, won't they? But 10 and 15 will as well, won't they? Does it matter which one I choose first? Not at all. Any numerator to what? So it doesn't matter which one you choose first. So let's just do the 3 and the 15. They'll both divide by what? 3, which gives you a 1 there and a 5 there. Okay? Now, 7 and 14 will both divide by something, right? 7 leaves you a 1 there and a what? Am I done? No. Look at this one. Even though the 15 divided once, 10 and 5 will still divide, won't they? So you need to keep reducing as long as anything will reduce. 10 and 5 will both divide by what? 5. So that leaves you a 1 there and a 2 there. And then what? Multiply straight across. My completed answer, 4 over 13. Already reduced, ready to go. All right, look how easy the multiplication became if you did the reduction first. If no other reason to follow the rules than that, I'll, I'm fine with that. All right, I don't want you to follow rules just because I say so. Follow the rules because it's easier. Fine with me. Okay. All right. So when you're multiplying fractions, what do you do first? Reduce, Reduce numerator to, and then you multiply straight across. There you go. Now, the other operation, surprisingly, that's also very easy to do with fractions is to divide them, which is really strange because usually division is the most difficult operation in mathematics for most students. So we're going to talk a little bit today about how to divide fractions. And the reason division with fractions is so easy is because you can't divide fractions. It's not an operation that's allowed. There's no way to divide them. But we can do something. What we're going to do is instead of divide them is that we are going to change to an operation that we already know how to do. What operation do we already know how to do? Multiplication. So we're going to change it to multiplication. But, can I just change 4 divided by 2 to 4 times 2? That's not the same thing, right? So what I have to do is I have to alter it. If I'm going to change the operation, I have to change the numbers that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is change to multiplication by the reciprocal. Now, I don't care if you know the definition of reciprocal or anything, but that's not important to me right now, but you will see the word. I want you to be able to find a reciprocal. To find the reciprocal of any fraction, all that means is invert it. The numerator becomes the denominator. The denominator becomes the numerator. So here's what it looks like in practice. Now I'm going to write this in what's called algebraic or general form, which means instead of using numbers, I'm just going to use letters. So here's our problem, right? I just used letters to represent numbers. It's division with what kind of numbers? Fractions, good. Can you divide by fraction with fractions? No. So we're going to change it to multiply by the what? Reciprocal. Now look closely at what's happening here. The A over B will not change ever. The first fraction never changes. The division is going to become what? Multiplication. Multiplication. Sorry, it's hard to make a dot on here. And the second fraction is going to become the reciprocal. What is the reciprocal of C over D? D over C, exactly. Which means I now no longer have a division problem, but a... And don't I already have rules for multiplying? You bet. 
So just follow the rules for multiplication. So let's look at a couple of examples of that. The first example, they just simply want you to find the reciprocal of 4 over 7. Now don't draw an equals here because 4 over 7 is not equal to its reciprocal. They just want you to find the reciprocal of it. What is the reciprocal of 4 over 7? 7 over 4. 7 over 4. Okay. What if I have the number 5 and I want the reciprocal of 5? 1 over 5. Yeah, because any whole number can be written as a fraction by putting it over a what? A 1. So the reciprocal of 5 over 1 is simply 1 over 5. Okay? So you will have whole numbers to work with as well. And what you always need to remember about whole numbers is any problem that has a fraction in it, the fraction rules take over, period. So therefore, the whole numbers have to become fractions. Okay? So the fraction rules always rule over all other rules. So let's look at them. Right? So say, for example, we have 1 over 3 divided by 2 over 9. First and most important thing you'll ever do is identify the operation. What operation is here? Division. 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 With, but is it division 8 divided by 2? Division, division with fractions, yeah. So it's not good enough to say it's just division. Remember, we need to say it's division. That's our operation. But it's division with what kind of numbers? Fractions. What do we know about dividing with fractions? Can't do it. What can we do, though? Change to multiply by the reciprocal. So will one-third change? No. no. What does the division become? Multiplication. And 2 over 9 is going to become... 9 over 2, which means we no longer have a division problem but a multiplication. So we go to the rules for that, which says I need to first what? Reduce. Reduce. 3 and 9 will both divide by 3, so that leaves me a 3 there and a 1 there. That's the only thing, so then I multiply straight across, gives me 3 over what? 2. And there's your completed answer. Now, another thing you might notice here that you've learned about fractions, 3 over 2, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. That's fine. Okay? We don't care. In algebra, that's fine. But I do need to do something to see about what course compass does with that. Let's see. We may have to deal with that. We'll look at it in lab and see. If they accept 3 over 2, then I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it because that's the acceptable answer in algebra. But in, in arithmetic, 3 over 2 wouldn't be allowed. What would you have to do? 1 and 1 half. Right. You would take the 3. Oops. Change back to the writing tool. You would take the 3 and divide it by the 2. goes in there one time, which is 2, with 1 left over. So this becomes the whole number. And this becomes your new numerator. Do you remember doing that? So 3 halves is the same as saying 1 and 1 half. And they may ask you to write it as a mixed number. This is called a mixed number because you have a whole number and a fraction in the same number. Okay? But all you do is take the numerator divided by the denominator, and it won't divide evenly. The, the part that does divide evenly becomes the whole number part. The stuff that doesn't, the stuff that's left over is becomes the numerator, right? Just in case. Now, in, in, a, in algebra, which one of these would I want? Three over two. But, it, but we're look, doing this review back in the arithmetic section, so it may want one and a half. Just warning you. I don't like for when you go to lab to have surprises if I can avoid it. And you all certainly don't. Okay? All right. Let's look at one more. Actually, I'm going to say we have... I'm sorry. Forget that. Say we have 6 divided by 3 over 7. What operation is indicated? With what kind of numbers? Fractions. 
What do you know about dividing with fractions? Can't do it. What can we do? Times the reciprocal. So will the 6 change? Nope. Nope. But we, okay. The bulk division becomes? And 3 over 7 becomes? Now it's no longer division, but multiplication. And since I have one fraction, then I should make everything look like a fraction by putting the 6 over a 1. Remember, anytime you have one fraction in a problem, the fraction rules take over for the entire problem. Okay. Now we'll just see if it'll reduce. Numerator, denominator, will it? 6 and 3 will both divide by 3, so that gives you 1 and 2. Then you multiply how? Straight across, which gives you 14 over 1. And is that the correct answer? Ooh, be careful. Yeah, 14 over 1, that'll divide, right? What's 14 divided by 1? Plain old 14. And that is your completed answer. Don't leave a number over 1. Now, you can put a number over 1 if you need to when you're trying to make a whole number turn into a fraction. When you're using it, think about it. Painting a room, you don't paint the room with all the stuff on the walls, right? You take everything down until you're finished, then you put it back. So it's fine to use whatever tools you need while you're doing the job, but when you're finished with the job, you need to clean it up. Okay? All right. How's it look? Pretty happy with the way this algebra's starting. What I'm doing here is I'm giving you some background into some topics that most of you just aren't very comfortable with. And I'm also trying to get you introduced a little bit to my teaching style and the way I do the steps and the processes. I want you to use those to make sure that you're able to do the problems that you're able to do, that you need to do. And so these first few classes like this, we're going to be doing some small activities like that, that don't really take that long. Like we've been in class like 40 minutes. Then, but after that, once we build our toolbox, then we can move faster. So these ideas and these tools, once you get them, then I expect you to know how to use them. I'm never going to tell you how to multiply another fraction or divide another fraction after today. I'm just going to do it. And I expect you to know those rules. And we have to be that way. We don't have time. Or actually, um, you're not accomplishing your goal of going to college if you have to ask every time you do something that you, we've already done. Okay? Now, think about our college education is not about training. If we were going to train you, then, you know, to go to McDonald's, they'll train you to fry, do fries all day long, right? But college is about thinking and being able to think at a higher level. Well, that means that you have to be, you will be taught skills, but then you're going to use those skills and you're going to have to remember those skills. So that's what we need to remember here. It's about the thinking process. Make sure you also know that we're not learning from examples. What's the important part of this, the material that we're learning? The rules, the steps. It's those notes that you need to know. So if we go up to, when we go up to lab, if you have a question, I'm going to first look to make sure you have your notes right next to you. If you don't, then you're not you're doing it right, right? If you get directions for somewhere, you draw a map, you don't throw the map in the back seat or put it in the trunk. You look at it so you'll know where, what directions to take. Well, use the notes that I give you in class when you're working on your homework, okay? So I need to teach, I need to teach you not only the topics, but also how to study and how to, and how to be effective learners, okay? Are we happy with fractions? Yeah. We want to go to lab so you can get out of here? Okay. Then 